This is episode 141 of Let's Talk Geek, your dose of everything geeky. In the show, scandal, controversy, all the operating systems update at once, and all the games are delayed at once. Thank you for joining us. In the show with me today, we have James. Good evening. From my gaming. How's that working out? Ah, wonderful. Cool. You are, you are editor. The editor. Excellent. Yes. For what that means, I don't know. <laughs> you edit things. I'm, I'm in charge, basically. You yeah. say what goes. You, exactly. and, and your various minions yes. in the forums. Yes. You, you have uh, a vast empire of uh, internet minions. Of internet minions, yes. And they follow my every word. They hang on my every word. So everything they say, the companies can come and moan at you about. Exactly. Excellent. There we go. Send it my way. <laughs> uh, behind the mixing desk and not mic'd up or camera'd up is the mixer. Hello. Do you want to be named the mixer? The mixer. The mixer's name is Annie. Um, the mixer, do you have a camera on your Wrigley thingies? This is the... Well, the that's just rude. Oh, okay. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yes. Actual Wrigley thingies. These are, since the mixer isn't mic'd up, are black soldier fly larvae. And they are Wrigley. As you may see. And they're awesome. And yeah. they're, we're looking at them very close up. How large or small are they? Um, yeah, we're very close up. They are... There we go. Oh, my goodness. They're in the studio. I thought they were like <laughs> remotely... We were being remotely viewed from somewhere. Uh, no, no. No, mm, no. This changes everything. <laughs> Run away! Because I was threatening to eat one earlier, so... No, uh, well, apparently they're quite tasty. Yeah. They taste nutty. <laughs> You're into nuts. <laughs> I'm quite nutty. Th no, no, we're not no, really going to eat your salted no, flies. No, I already, I already <laughs> ate, so spoil my dinner. If you've watched Let's Talk Hack before, then uh, you'll know all about these. If you have not watched Let's Talk Hack before, go and check that out. Or go and check up. Um, we'll have <laughs> some uh, videos up soon about talks involving um, aquaponics. And no, no, uh, actually following on from the aquaponics talk about the amazingness of black soldier flies and the you mm -hmm. know the good mm -hmm. they can do in terms of compost creation and the the ecosystem that they close almost so like they they help close a loop in the okay. in the ecosystem so if you want to build like a sort of self sustaining uh, uh, veggie garden wasn't it yeah yeah a veggie mm -hmm. garden or like a like a little sustenance farm of mm -hmm. some sort very very handy yeah, creature stuff. creature yeah. to have in your stable okay yep and uh, if that wasn't random enough, we have another random related to our uh, show number. The K-141 Kursk was an Oscar II-class nuclear-powered cruise missile submarine of the Russian Navy. And it was lost with all hands, very sad, in the Barents Sea on 12 August of in the year 2000. Um, a bit of a controversy around it. W was that the one that sank and they were all trapped? Uh, yeah. And they tried to get them out. And yeah, yeah. It was it was so, yeah, very tragic. Yeah, and, and uh, hair-raising. Mm. And um, uh, b basically what, it's, what it sounded like, in July 2002, the, they um, concluded an investigation and the committee concluded that a technical malfunction on a single type 6576 kit whale torpedo caused the first explosion that triggered a fire in the torpedo room, which two minutes later caused the detonation of additional torpedoes stored in the torpedo room. And uh, the second explosion destroyed a large section of the submarine, at least four of the nine compartments, killing up to 95 of the 118 crew and causing the submarine to sink. Around 23 crew members survived. The sinking took refuge in the ninth compartment where they died due to carbon monoxide poisoning, so they, they, they suffocated. <laughs> Um, following a fire in that compartment. Oh, sorry, it's the f yeah. So it's yeah, a fire, fire. Mm. and um, <coughs> and that's between six and thirty-two hours after sinking. And um, interestingly, these crew, with their last moments, scribbled notes um, about okay. what what had happened, what was going on, and um, that then uh, aided the investigation. Jeez. Yeah, so yeah, that's scary stuff. Man. Indeed, hardcore stuff. And an example of when engineering uh, goes wrong, I guess. Yeah. Um, and and in unpredictable ways. I think Fukushima was another example. Oh, geez, yeah. Um, where due to good engineering, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. So I mean, it's stuff that you can't yeah. predict. We still got a long way to go when it comes to nuclear technology, uh, obviously, because look what can go wrong badly. Yeah, wrong. yeah. But I mean, the same can be said of of anything that mm, we do really yeah. and, it, and it's really funny like there's these um these drives in safety uh with regards to engineering and it's a good thing mm. um but uh, a lot of concern over safety in certain aspects of uh technology so 
in terms of radio emissions mm, and mm. Uh, where we put up towers and and that sort of thing on the on the broadcasting and broadband side of things, um, and yet um, we lose so many people in cave-ins and all kinds of mining yes, disasters, yes. Uh, which then also feed into the energy sector and and that sort of thing. So I mean, a, mo a lot of South Africa's electricity is fueled off of coal. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and a lot of we have still have quite a lot of deaths. Yeah. Uh, in so mines. I mean, you you get almost like this middle class whinging about radio waves. And then, on the other hand, there's these people who are risking their lives daily to provide us with electricity so we can enjoy things like cell phone towers and instant communications. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, maybe uh, a bit of perspective, Some perspective helps every now and then. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and with that, I'm going to take us into the Quick Geek and more scandal, more mm, controversy. Scandal. Um, and uh, Woolworths has, uh, has made the blogs again. And, uh, <laughs> and this time around, it's over a pillow design. So, you know, if, as <laughs> if the radioactive cell phone tiles wasn't bad enough. Now, woolies and their pillows. Yeah. I but, don't know what to believe but, anymore. But, but I think the <laughs> larger I think the larger point here. So just maybe to give the whole story um, mm. is that a designer mm. uh, called Eodia Roots um, published a blog post about how she took a design of a hummingbird for the specific uh, for a number of purposes. But they eventually um, cut you know, all the other things down and said, okay, we, we want to put this on a pillow, cushion, whatever, uh, scatter cushion. Yes. And, <laughs> um, and so they, uh, but then like the whole process dragged out, they, they demanded samples and, um, mm -hmm. and kept her samples and uh, wanted her to, her to reveal her cost price, which um, she was naturally quite skittish to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole process dragged on quite a long while. They let her know, sorry, we're not going to use it. Next thing she sees, there's a hummingbird pillow in... Yes. Woolworths. I mean, she was obviously Scandal. shopping that day for her Scottish salmon, and uh, <laughs> and there it was. <laughs> so we're having a first world problem. Yes. Episode of this <laughs> um, and uh, and so Woolworths has issued a statement to say, now hang on a minute, um, they were this particular design was in production months before they'd even even met this young mm -hmm. designer, um, and so while yes, it is a startling coincidence mm -hmm. that is in in fact all it is. They've paid another designer, a Durban-based designer, for this design mm. um, and ended up not using it. So hers. the plot thickens, the controversy goes deeper. Yeah, but now, so, so there was a lot of focus on the hummingbird controversy. But um, I think she also highlighted the fact that, and, and yes. if the little, um, the the little exponentials mm. in the text aren't a giveaway, that is text lifted from Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, so when the hummingbird controversy quiet, quieted down and people could think a little bit more about you know, what's going on, the fact is that the, the text that they lifted is not attributed to Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. And Wikipedia mm -hmm. uh, issues has, is, has licensed its content under a Creative Commons license. It is the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 unported license, mm -hmm. according mm -hmm. to Paul Jacobson okay. from Web Tech Law. In short, what that means, and, and um, Creative Commons licenses are actually very easy to understand and read once you know what the keywords mean, like any piece of technology. So Creative Commons defines the type of license. Sharealike means that, oh, let's start with attribution. Attribution mm -hmm. means that you have to say where you got this from in the manner that they specify. So if Wikipedia says that when using this text, please say that you got it from Wikipedia, that's what you've got to mm -hmm. do, attribution. Sharealike means if you use this, you have to, whatever content you create from our, derived, from our content, so whatever derivative work you make, you have to share under this same license. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, uh, it's similar to the GPL, the copy left, as uh, Richard Stallman would call it. You, you have to pay it forward, mm -hmm. as it were. Mm -hmm. okay. And, uh, and so, sorry, which, hasn't one, done that. which one was this? The, uh, the, the this the was text. both attribution okay. share alike. Okay, so that's that's what this <coughs> was about, and uh, and so um, yeah, uh, I was alerted to this by uh, a guy um, that, that I met through other means, Stuart Steadman, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and so we're probably going to do an article on this. Got some comment from Wikimedia, and uh, and yeah, it's uh, I think uh, a very interesting yeah, it can question be interesting, yeah. about how licensing of Wikipedia content works, how, wha what needs to be done about it. And it's, uh, it's uh, as far as I know, not really ground that's been covered in the yeah. mainstream in South so, Africa. Um, so what happens, can Wikipedia sue Woolies now for what, what yeah, the, and, and, and the deal? And th that, that is the, the, pr the practical repercussions that I'm not too sure of. They refuse to comment on the specific scenario. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, would somebody like Wikipedia sue? Yeah, like would they bother? For but plagiarism. Then again, you know, th these guys will continue to get away with this sort of junk if. Yeah, and and, so and we, maybe we can the, the debate will spin off into what are they getting away with? Really, it's you know a bit of text about a hummingbird. Yeah, so yeah. Well, uh, uh, but the fact is that's the license. Yeah, yeah. So and it's a quite a permissive license in the first place. Um, you know, I think it's just lazy. All from you've got to do is just as well. Or and but then you also have to, and this is what I wanted them to to commit to, but they didn't say anything, is. What does it mean for the rest of the design? Does the whole design, Hummingbird included, need to be effectively open sourced? Yeah, yeah. And uh, and that remains well, to be seen. There's I'm, a local I'm Wikimedia chapter. Mm. Um, okay. So see what uh, they have to say. So we'll see what they have okay. to say as well. Yeah, I'm certainly going to think twice before I buy any Hummingbird scatter cushions <laughs> from Willie's now because yeah, this is outrageous. It's, it's an outrage. Mm. Talking about rage. Ah, <laughs> good segue. I like it. E excellent. <laughs> um, there was there's a, an expo in South Africa called Rage. Stands mm -hmm. for really awesome gaming expo. What is used to? Um, uh, no, no, the, they're the, still the um, and, and they even stylize it with a capital A and a lowercase R and for all those um, you know, really awesome. grammar Nazis out there. So it's awesome with a capital A. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Well, um, run us through a little bit. Um, this is yeah, obviously something so that my gaming would have followed closely. Yeah, it was actually the tenth year for Rage, so that's you know like a milestone in, in its own right. And then um, this year was also the largest Rage Expo ever in terms of visitors through the gates. So. They gave us the official numbers, three, uh, 32,626 visitors exactly, um, and that's a 13% increase over 2012's figures. Um, and we reckon you know, the, the attraction of the PS4 and the Xbox One was actually there on show, so good job you know, Sony and the Microsoft for mm -hmm. getting the consoles there, even though they haven't launched yet, and um, some of the next-gen games are on show. Um, I think Rise was on show on the Xbox One. Um, yeah, so we reckon you know that was a bit of a draw card, um, and and in general, uh, yeah, I quite liked it. Uh, the you know the expo is it's almost bursting at the seams. The mm. dome can't contain it any longer, and uh, of course on the other side of things you have the uh, that they said exactly two thousand one hundred forty eight players at the Naglan. Um, not as big as it's been in previous years. I think we've cracked two thousand five hundred. It, it looked smaller, to um, be honest. In wh years wh past. While we were there on mm. look, we were there on the Sunday. People were already starting to pack up, but the land genuinely looked <coughs> smaller. Yeah, I think they needed more expo space. So, um, you know, they only open up the land sales a bit later, and I think that's so the ex exhibitors can claim their space, and then they'll fill up the rest with uh, naglanders. Mm. But um, yeah, I mean, these guys are dedicated. That's three days of solid gaming and little sleep and, you know, not the best or most hygienic conditions to get it all done. Uh, but another great um, achievement this year, I think, which was, you know, to cap off the whole biggest rage ever thing and the 10th year was that IS showed up and they brought a one gigabit per second fiber link with them. And they provided internet traffic to everyone at the LAN. And obviously in this day and age, you know, internet is pretty much a requirement for... Uh, multiplayer games. Thank you, Steam. Thank you, DRM. Thank you, Steam. Yeah. And um, it's, and it's actually I, I'm laying that the blame at Steam's fault, ah, but I wouldn't Blizzard, blame Steam. So yeah, much Bl Blizzard the and the Call of Duty guys, Infinity on. Ward, I think were some of the first people yeah. to go, ah, oh, no more land in our land game. Yeah, the the Call of Duty no more land controversy. That was a big one mm. back in the day. And the Starcraft um, one. Yeah, and Starcraft moved over, and you know, there's a very big games, and so and now uh, Dota two, of course. Um, I ironically, they actually uh, announced that they were patching in land support uh, for Dota 2. Uh, the patch would only be out, um, I think, after Rage, if I okay. remember correctly. So didn't make it to yeah. Rage. Didn't matter. IS was there. <laughs> they had an internet connection to everyone. And uh, everyone I spoke to said it was smashing. It, it just, there were no problems. In previous years, guys had tried to get an, a net connection in, but it wasn't great. This year, it was just perfect. Yeah, and um, yeah. So we got some stats from IS, and uh, overall, they served 26 terabytes of traffic, uh, internet traffic, that is. That's not just general uh, land traffic. That's costly. Uh, yeah, 21.3 terabytes down and 4.6 terabytes up. And um, apparently, the gaming traffic peaked at 975 megabits per second at one point, so that's pretty much maxing out that one gigabits per second link that they had going. Um, interestingly, out of the... Uh, how many was it now? Sorry, I just lost the numbers. 1642. Yeah, yes. 1642 actual connections. Active IPs. Yeah, out of the 2,148, you know, actual LANers that pitched up. So, um, you know, maybe some guys came and went and the IPs got reassigned. We, we don't know exactly. But overall, they had 1,642 active IPs, so active users on, on that um, network. Yeah. So we did some math and very rudimentary math, and we reckon that was 
15.8 gigabytes used per laner. Yeah, not bad. Uh, yeah, so not bad at yeah, all. Well done to everyone involved. That yeah. was really cool. Um, and uh, just to to weigh in on this, um, with Let's Talk Geek, we we got to go in and um, and shoot a bit of video of mm -hmm. stuff, and um, just a, a quick mention of the Make Games SA guys okay, yeah. it was really amazing to see that stand. It reminded me a little bit of the I think that the, the there's a standard packs mm -hmm. where they also do this where like all the indie game all the the indie guys sort of club together yeah. so that they've got a big stand. And it was really cool to see that. Like, <coughs> th there, there must have been 15 or so um, indie guys showcasing their games yeah. there. And um, local guys, South African guys, trying to make a go of it. And it's really cool to yeah. see the scene. And um, so I think vibrant. everyone was impressed. Uh, I saw a lot of, you know, feedback on Twitter after Rage. And people were saying, wow, you know, the South African developers were out in force. And we were really impressed with what they had going on there. And I think, uh, stand corrected, but maybe... Uh, I think that stand is provided free by uh, oh, That'd be quite cool. I think. Every we were year they sort of that. give the indie guys a place Nick to Hall showcase. Because Nick does yeah. mention that they do do some fundraising for Make Games yeah, SA. Yeah. Um, uh, so I was wondering mm -hmm. if maybe they'd yeah. raise some money to get a stand. Then the other thing, I mean, we, we also got to see some of the next-gen consoles. Mm -hmm. I only got to see the Xbox One. I yes, didn't actually get to it see was there action. under lock and key, of course, mm -hmm. and there was a security guard. Three security guards, Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. some of them you don't even see because they're ninjas and... <laughs> <laughs> and that's not even a joke. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and the PlayStation Four, mm. we got to see a demo of. Didn't get to see the PlayStation Four. Well, it was not in action. I mean, it was there in that display case, but the PlayStation Four itself wasn't being used. But we saw the demos. Yeah, so. yeah. So. And uh, and quite cool uh, to see the, the augmented reality stuff. To see what mm. they were doing with a controller. Um, so if you if you haven't checked out videos of the PlayStation Four in action. Do yeah. go check that out. It's actually quite interesting. It's a new era in gaming, man. It's going to be really exciting yeah, when yeah. the new consoles drop. Uh, not just for console gamers, but, you know, the PC market will benefit as well. we'll You're see right. A lot of yeah, definitely. I mean, um, this is the new benchmark. It's the new standard. We were discussing it the other day. And, um, you know, we've been sort of locked into what the consoles can do for so Direct long X9, on PC. Basically. Yeah, <laughs> on in, in a way. And I mean, you know, every now and then you get a game that pushes the limits and whatever. But, you know, the last thing that really sent a be a set a benchmark on PC was Crisis, really. And, you know, it's still a joke to this day, but kind of run Crisis. Yeah, yeah. And, Metro um, also Metro was one of them. Uh, you know, I think Crisis was the big one. But anyway, so now this is kind of the new benchmark. And um, this is what games... The bare minimum awesomeness of games is what the Needs PS4 and the Xbox One can achieve. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it'll be great moving forward. Yeah, moving on from consoles, uh, it's mm. PC time. All the All operating the system op updates dropped in the last two yeah. weeks. Um, and so the furthest back is, I think, Windows 8.1. Um, and uh, with window, uh, I see here, Wesley wrote that Windows 8 support ends in 2015. Yeah, version, so 8 version 8. I mean, 8.1 support, uh, I don't think they've mentioned it yet when that ends, but um, if yeah. you refuse to upgrade to 8.1 for some strange reason, uh, you're not getting support yeah. any longer. And it, and it would be a strange yeah. reason because the upgrade is free. Yeah. Um, and so um, as long as you're an 8. So yes. once you've upgraded to 8, the upgrade is free. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, then uh, I, I, don't, I don't really have much to say about 8.1. I'm using it at home. Yeah, uh, w the one thing I keep saying about 8.1 is the only reason I would want to upgrade to 8.1 is DirectX 11.2. And um, at the moment, there's no games that are really pushing DirectX 11.2. Uh, this is another reason why the consoles will um, help get us there. So yeah. But the Xbox One... I, is I might not need to do that for another year. Yeah. 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 The Xbox One, is that going to run 11.2? It, it runs, again, it's like some sort of DirectX 11 hybrid thingy they've got going on. Okay. I think um, this... Obviously, the, the, the graphics hardware itself is you know set in stone now that they've settled on that. But... Um, they're, they're, they're based, I think, on AMD's uh, tech, yes. which is Graphics Core Next, which is um, a very programmable sort of GPU okay. architecture. So um, <clears throat> they can, I think they, can, they will be able to you know, update firmwares and also um, you know, update you know, graphics programming APIs for newer games as the years okay. go by. So we won't be as sort of stuck on yeah. what the hardware that can do. That kind of programmability is interesting because mm. you're going to wonder what that's going to do to backwards compatibility. So let's say you buy a new Xbox One mm. game. You play it at launch day and cool. Two years down the line, there's been a number of improvements in graphics yeah. firmware. You go back to that old game. Now what? And they'll uh, probably they'll have to keep updating the game if mm. something does break. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, d I don't think something will break, basically. It's like I have some old PC games that haven't been touched for years, and they still run fine. Mm. So, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah but um, basically because the APIs remain stable. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, All right. yeah. we'll uh, have to cross that bridge. When we yeah, then yeah. on the same day, 
Yeah, conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> Ubuntu 13.10 saucy salamander dropped. Mm. Um, you were quite interested in this story. Um, what what sort yeah, of stood out? Yeah, um, it, it's interesting. It's an interesting sort of milestone in Ubuntu because now it is their it's their unified release. This is it. This is what they've been talking about for so long, and that means. Ubuntu 13.10 is Ubuntu everywhere on your server, your enterprise server, on your desktop, and on your phone. It's all essentially the same core system. Mm. So there's no you know separate versions and all that. And you know this is probably the first you know proper step in their mission to have a unified uh, system. And they have this, uh, it seems like a dream at the moment of having this single device, which will be your phone. And then when you get to, to work, you plonk it down and it becomes your work desktop. And then you take it home and it becomes your entertainment center. And it all runs off the same uh, Ubuntu operating system, essentially. So, yeah, that's just, I think, a very interesting yeah. step in uh, Ubuntu's. Uh, you yeah. know, uh, Something Khaled and I have been talking <coughs> about for a while is you know, like a true portable PC. Yeah. Like you, when you're, when you're done with it, you unplug it from your screen, you put it in your pocket, you carry it with you. Yeah. That would be great. It would. Um, I don't know how much I'd like want like all my things on one, you know, like on a cell phone sized PC. Uh, there's still something to be said, I think for, you know, a dedicated device. Uh, sure. But it's still, it's still cool. And, and the other thing with Ubuntu is, um, they, they don't want you to just have one device and that does everything. They, they want to keep everything um, synchronized across your various devices as well. And this is what Ubuntu uh, 13.10 can achieve because it's all the same thing. So that you're not going to have complications uh, you know, backing to the Ubuntu cloud, uh, your work stuff, which you can access from home as if it's the same system it's almost like nothing's changed yeah yeah so yeah i'm gonna th there's there's a lot to ubuntu 13.10 i'm gonna move us along yep. though um because apple also dropped mavericks mm -hmm. um the the upgrade to os x and uh the 10th uh release of os x i just want to see what the version number is i'm assuming it's 0.9 10.9 so yeah. it's interesting <coughs> it's the 10th release but it's 10.9 um and uh they uh i think uh the the surprise of the event yeah. was that they said it's quite funny. It's free. Yeah, something free from Apple. <gasps> <laughs> Jaws well, hit the floor. In, in fairness, I mean, I've not seen an operating system yeah. upgrade being given away for free ever. Um, I, I unless don't know. it's Ubuntu, I, you know. I'm like, always so dismissive of Apple stuff because it's always fun to mock Apple, but um, I don't really understand where it falls. You know, what is it? Is it like Windows 8.1 where it's essentially a service no. pack? This is, is, is like Windows 7 system? to Windows 8 kind of thing. Yeah, um, but if they've released so many over the lifetime. It just seems that they do this more yes, often than the others. Exactly. So they've, they've got an annual release why. cycle. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I think people see it as like, a, it's almost like a service pack. Yeah. You know, this is a Mac. And maybe that is a way to look at it. And that's why it's never cost a lot. Yeah. Um, it, the, the prices have always been quite a bit lower than Windows, if memory yeah. serves. Now, they and, were boasting um, a lot of improvements, such as battery life on various devices and stuff like that. And um, I, I'm not, I think there were some other technical improvements. But I think, Offering it for free is uh, very interesting because, um, like, do they really need to make 20 bucks off everyone? Let's get everyone upgraded to the latest version. There's no excuses yep. now for you to and hang on to your old version. And you've hit on to an interesting point mm. because um, Syracuse, John Syracuse from Ars Technica, who mm -hmm. does the 24 page, he did literally did a 24,000 <laughs> word review yeah, I remember of that OSA. Thing. He did it now again okay. for Mavericks. TLDR. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's one of the things he mentioned okay. is um, th that's, his, that's why he reckons they've dropped the price as well is so that they can talk adoption rate yeah it's one of the things that apple is very proud of when they talk about ios um you know they always they always sort of rub their competitors noses in it they're like yeah how's how's android doing mm, mm. uh you know, your your most used version is two point you know whatever yeah, yeah. congratulations yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so they you know they mock their competitors mm -hmm. um with their adoption rates on ios and so i think they want to push for the same on yeah. the desktop and, and that makes sense to me. And uh, I know we're going to get into it a bit later, but I think that ties into talking about Apple devices and they mustn't be so cocky yeah, uh, yeah. moving forward. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And, and uh, something that you mentioned ahead of the show is the name. Um, mm. And no, Mavericks... Yes, is it a cat? No, is Mavericks is not a cat. Middle? It is yeah. in fact a location in California okay. where they do a lot of surfing. Okay. Um, and so um, with the 10th release of OS X, uh, and also I think they must have realized, listen, we called one of our releases Lion. Now what? That's a we've bit hit the, We've hit the yeah, top of the food lion, chain. Actually, yeah. uh, Snow lions, okay, <laughs> yeah. we've been there. Or well, they've done mountain lion, mountain lion. But it's yeah. not better than a lion, is mm. it? 
Um, and so, yeah, they, they decided for the next, they said for the next 10 years, they're going to use a new naming scheme. They're going to name OSX releases after inspiring places in California. Okay, yeah. nice. And reinforcing that whole branding push of theirs, you know. Made in California. Designed what, what's by the Ap full thing? Designed by Apple in California. Yes, got to get it right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they were also just saying the Mac Pro uh, assembled in the USA, I noticed. Oh, um, yeah, big deal. Parts made in China, but we glued it together in the USA. <laughs> so. Oh, is it only assembled in the USA? Yes, assembled. So, like, so basically they've built the equivalent they of put Mustang. The, they put that tubular case thing on top and screwed it in. <laughs> no, it's probably, yeah. probably more involved than that. But yeah. look, not to take away anything from Mustang, because the fact is, what are you going to do? Are you going to yeah. build those components here? Well, I mean... But they've effectively done that. How, how far like do you want to drill it down? Plant. I mean, some Chinese guy somewhere had to make that processor, probably. So, you know... Or an Indonesian. Or whatever or a, it may yeah. be. Yeah. It's, some, it's somewhere, uh, you know, in that archipelago. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> right. And... Uh, then I'm going to move us along mm -hmm. onto the battle at the My Broadband Conference. Ah, it wouldn't be a My Broadband Conference if something <laughs> awesome didn't happen. Yeah. So. And, uh, mm. and lots happened. So this is really just one of the few things I'm going to focus on. But um, an, uh, an ice war of words, a bun fight even. And uh, Aki Anastasiu, uh, I think, decided this is now all out war um, between the, the CEOs of the operators. So um, Shamil Jusub, um uh, was Vodacom. Yeah, from yep. Vodacom, mm -hmm. was first at the podium, and, and um, uh, Rudolf Miller, founder of and editor of My Broadband, uh, like did an interview with him. Mm -hmm. And Shamil was of the opinion that prices in South Africa are actually not so bad when you look at them in, you know, in context. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the context he was referring to is that no one is paying the headline prices. Um, there's always some sort of special on, always some sort of promotion on, that no one is really paying the rates being filed at Icasa. Mm -hmm. um, that's a whole other story, yeah, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. and so um, Alan Notcray came up on stage and said, that that's hogwash. The fact is, the permanent price you file at Icasa is the price. That's the only way we've got to measure mm -hmm. what the cost to I communicate think that's is a in fair this country. point. I thought it was, yeah, yeah interesting point. Hit mm. back immediately and then did his presentation. Um, I don't want to dwell on it too much. Very interesting presentation explaining... Um, why Cell C simply isn't in a position to compete effectively, or, and Telco Mobile, mm -hmm. the two of them together, yes, is, are, not in, are, are not in a position to, to effectively compete with mm -hmm. uh, Vodacom and MTN. And so we won't see meaningful change. We won't see meaningful price cuts. Only if there's competition mm -hmm. um, will we see that happen, and it is, is his opinion. And, uh, and, he, and one of the things he said that could be done to foster that is mobile termination rate cuts, right? And asynchronous, uh, asynchronous uh, what is it now? And asynchronous mobile termination yes, rate cuts. Okay, absolutely, so sorry, uh, yeah. absolutely correct. Um, then uh, dropped the bombshell, mm -hmm. said that he was hauling a Vodacom and MTN in front of the competition commission for predatory pricing, basically, uh, and mm. competitive practices because they offer off-net and on-net prices. Uh, this naturally resulted in immediate backlash. Yeah. Um, so the first one uh, who, 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 got a, who, who got his word in was Zuneid um, Fabubulia from MTN. Mm -hmm. He's the big boss at MTN, South Africa. And who said, hang on a minute, Celsi, you also offer on-net, off-net price differentiation. So what's this yeah. hypocrisy? Um, and, uh, and so, um, yeah, they reckon it's industry standard practice. Makes perfect sense because the fact is you pay less to place a call to your own network than you do to terminate yeah, one yeah. another network. And um, I think um, I remember Alan saying um, that the, the, the on-net, off-net pricing thing w made sense in the early days of the South African cellular market, but now it really needs to, uh, you know, it needs to stop, basically. And I guess uh, maybe he, he'll be willing to stop it if it's enforced, perhaps. Um, yeah, sure. You know, I mean, it, it all no hinges on the results no of this of, potential. No skill of cell C's nose. Yes. Um, and the, I think the core argument that he made was that um, this encourages... Um, uh, customers to phone on that yes. provider's own network, which um, effectively, uh, you know, you can say that it denies someone like Cell C or Telco Mobile termination rates. Yes, which and is which is a, a good also, way for them to make money. Um, and also to try and get customers away from the big guys yeah. because they like say, the whole well, family on Vodacom. All my mates and all my family are on Vodacom, so yeah. I'm not going to lose out on the reduced core rates. Yeah, now, exactly. Uh, I guess you would argue, yes, I also have the on-net discounts, but I have to do that to try and remain competitive. Yeah. You guys are setting the standards. So yeah. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how this and, turns uh, out. And on his other point about competitiveness, um, MTN Zunaid Babulia had also an interesting presentation where he said, uh, actually, um, that could lead to market failure. Um, mm. So too much competition in the space could actually lead to market failure. 
I'm not going to dwell on it too much. Um, there's articles on my broadband, and uh, the videos are actually published thanks to Mindset mm -hmm. uh, Network. Um, so you can actually go and check out his talk yeah. uh, to All see why exactly stuff, yeah. he feels this way. Um, don't dismiss any three of these guys out of hand. The arguments are all interesting. Mm. Um, I mean, as a consumer, I know where I stand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but the arguments remain interesting and worth checking out. Um, I'm going to move us on to cool. a big blunder. Something hilarious. From, from, yeah. from The Sun, UK newspaper, not the South African one. Yes. Um, and who thought that something out of Deus Ex was real. Yeah, I mean, it's a fairly short little story. And, you know, The Sun is not known for the quality of its journalism by any means. And it, the, the article, if you could even call it that, I mean, I think it was three sentences long. But they, they threw in a little thing about cybernetic implants. And um, they cited a few things. And among them was... Uh, this is the quote right at the end. And U.S. firm Sarif Industries has developed an eyeball implant on the left. And they actually republished this picture, which is uh, one of the uh, sort of promo game artwork promo shots. shots for the game Deus Ex Human Revolution, which is all about augmented humans and all sorts of you know wonderful conspiracies around that. But... The, uh, whoever, wh whichever journalist at the Sun was, uh, had to cobble together some page filler uh, and decided that cybernetic implants is a good topic, fell for this hook, line, and sinker. And or thought decided it was he wanted to see if he could sneak it by his editor. Oh, perhaps, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe there was a bit of an inside joke going on, which is also, you know, awesome. Uh, full, you know, 10 points for, the, for doing <laughs> that as well. Oh, yeah. So we just thought it was very amusing. And there it was published in the Sun. And I totally want a Serif Industries eyeball implant. Mm. Yeah, yeah, those were quite handy in the game, I seem to remember. Yeah, so, like yeah. Your, I think your <laughs> aim goes up, all kinds yeah, all of stuff. Yeah, all sorts of good stuff. Vision, it's great. <laughs> um, the other thing that happened uh, last night at Apple's, was it? Yeah, it was yeah. last night at yep, Apple's big night. launch, is they announced a whole bunch of hardware refreshes. Not going to yeah. dwell on them too much, just to quickly run through them. Is the iPad 5 is no, the, no, and the iPad are no longer called the new iPad and the new iPad with Retina and the new, new iPad well, with Retina. They, they stuck with the Retina thing for the, uh, the iPad mini. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to yeah. the iPad mini. But, um, yep. but, but they've renamed it the iPad Air. And everyone laughed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's also not undeserving of the name they it uh, is quite light the they light broke the one pound barrier i don't know what a pound is in real measurements but yeah, yeah, um, it's apparently it's very light <laughs> they, and they shave off quite a bit of weight actually, yes yeah so, so it's it's mm. at exactly a pound apparently mm -hmm. and uh and yeah and so other than that mm. you know minus spec bump um, nice and thin as well they, they their little promo video showed a uh, standard pencil on a table and it was a level shot and then they pan the camera up and, oh, there's an iPad hiding behind the pencil. So okay. it really illustrated pencil quite trick. well how thin that thing is. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Um, then iPad mini got uh, probably a bigger spec bump than the yeah. iPad Air a retina now. Display. Got, yeah. yeah, it got a retina display, got a pretty significant hardware bump. Mm. Um, so very, yeah. very pretty. Um, these things are expensive, hey? I, yeah. I, I don't know. And they mustn't. They they had a very lengthy hard sell segment about how wonderful the iPad is, and yeah, it, it yeah. almost seemed a bit desperate. Like, okay, Apple, we know the iPad's nice. You don't have to remind us. <laughs> um, get on with it. You know what's new. Yeah, yeah. And uh, anyway, th that is what's new. There's a new iPad. Yeah, yeah. And uh, five hundred dollars for a sixteen gig tablet PC. That's a lot of money. Uh, and there's a lot of competition in the market now. I mean, a few years ago, iPad was the bee's knees, and you probably yeah. just would have bought it out of hand. But yeah, these guys, though, uh, it's going to be interesting to yeah. see what people go for. But these guys have like massive LTE support built mm -hmm. in now. The iPad mini um, also got a bit of a bump to its cameras mm -hmm. five megapixel rear camera and the FaceTime HD front facing camera now. Mm -hmm. um, so um, Th they're still quality. I mean, you can feel an iPad is good quality. Yeah, when you pick sure, up, sure. So. But definitely, luck like squarely in luxury item yeah. cat category. I think um, this is not uh, you know something that you can sell as uh, as an essential piece of technology to do e learning with or something. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just too expensive. And uh, oh, maybe on that note, there's still the iPad two, um, oh, yeah. which because uh, they they dropped the iPad four. With Retina or whatever it was, the new iPad, the iPad Retina, 4, yeah. which is the iPad 4. No, So they're canning that. Um, the iPad 3 is gone now. The the, the new one with um, Lightning connector and the old one with what, the other connector. So iPad 2 is the only other choice. And uh, I was listening to some commentators afterwards and they're speculating that you put the iPad 2 next to the new iPad and it's an easy sell because it's um, 399 I think, for the iPad 2 still. So an extra 100 bucks and you get an iPad 5. Or uh, it's actually that. the other way. It's, it's 299 for the iPad 2, 399 for the iPad Air um, without cellular. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. 100 bucks difference. Dollars. Yeah. yeah. Dollars, yeah. 
So Multiply yeah, the, by ten the, four. The right. iPad two may still fit that um, e uh, you know, e learning sort of yeah, niche. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. I guess for for uh, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna say it uh, in, in our context for the wealthier schools. I yeah, think, yeah or oh, heavily yeah. subsidized. Um, then game delays. All the games have been delayed. It's actually quite. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah. There's one that I'm really disappointed by. Okay. Um, yeah, I know which one that is. Uh, well, let's go in, in order. Uh, yeah. Batman Arkham Origins just saw a delay in SA, and um, it turned out um, I knew about this before the Europeans knew it got delayed, which was quite interesting. Um, okay. Th it's been delayed in Europe until 8 November, but according to our local guys, it's only delayed until 1 November. And sorry, just to clarify, that is for PC and 3DS. And the 3DS version isn't even the main game. It's actually called Black something... Black Knight. <laughs> Black Knight. Yeah, uh, Sorry, <laughs> Apple reference. Apple joke, if, you yes. go, if you go and watch so the keynote. So the PC version of Arkham Origins has been delayed by a week in South Africa um, and by two weeks in Europe. So, uh, yeah. Then uh, we've got Watch Dogs, which was, everyone was hugely disappointed by that. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, it's, well, it's hugely affected disappointed in, in a positive delays. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, man, I really wanted this game. That's how I felt. Yes. Um, and uh, and it's also, but it's caused apparently a bit of a problem for next gen console pre orders. Okay. Um, it so was a, a platform shifter, I guess. Um, yeah. And yeah, and I mean, guys have put in pre orders that were, were including this game. Okay. Now, what? That's uh, a good is point. your, is yeah, your delivery on your console going to get delayed? Uh, are you just not going to get your game? game? You know, what's going to break? Later, download yeah. token, whatever. Yeah, th they say. Um, it's to work on the game further and whatever. I mean, it looks like very ambitious. It's a good excuse. And um, yeah, it's a good excuse. All the gamers say, great, make the best game you can. We'll wait um, because we hate buggy games at launch. So yeah. that's fine. All the investors in Ubisoft said, oh my gosh, that delay, uh, that delay pushes us into the next financial year and we're selling our shares in Ubisoft. Uh, it's the apocalypse. <laughs> and uh, Ubisoft shares dropped by a good 25% in value, I think, the oh, next cool. day. It was insane to So see. now is a good time to get some, uh, yeah, like yeah. some French footprint and buy Ubisoft shares, Yeah, if you want right? to quickly buy some Ubisoft shares, now may not be a bad time. Um, the delay also affected The Crew, which is their racing game sort of need for speed competitor thing that they had going on and wasn't nearly as... Um, hyped up and uh, is excitable as Watch Dogs, but still, you know, the racing game fans will probably be a bit disappointed with that. Um, and then Drive Club, which is Sony's uh, exclusive next-gen uh, driving game, was going to be a PS4 launch title. It looked very pretty. Uh, unfortunately, has been delayed. And it was going to be the uh, one of the first games offered with the PlayStation Plus subscription. So... Um, uh, which means uh, you, you get a free game if you subscribe to PlayStation Plus. So that was going to be one of the yeah. games yeah. to yeah. get everyone interested in PlayStation Plus. So they, they still haven't really told us what's going to replace that offering. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, a bit of a bit of a delay all around there. A bit yeah, sad. yeah, yeah. Uh, but that happens, yep. and uh, and uh, and I guess it's not a year of gaming news if something doesn't get delayed. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's sort of yeah. Blizzard and. Valve staple stuff, and since they're not delaying anything this year, yeah, <laughs> they have to be Do someone they else. Have anything to delay? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, yeah. I, I'm going to move us on to the South African gaming scene. Um, something yeah. interesting from cleanup de detail that looked interesting. Yeah, Viscera cleanup and, detail. And Shadow Warrior, what's this now? Yeah, um, Shadow Warrior. They did a remake of the classic, and it's just a very bloody, gory, you know, hack and slash, first person hack and slash game, and you play a ninja and you chop people into pieces while doing your ninja duties. Okay, and um, of course, ninjas don't really stop to think about the cleaning crew. Uh, they just leave limbs and gore and blood everywhere they go. And then Viscera Cleanup Crew has to clean up the mess. So uh, Viscera Cleanup Detail is actually a, like a parody game of sorts by South African developer RuneStorm. Uh, they're also known for Rook's Keep, which is an arena battle game. It's pretty cool. And um, you basically clean up the mess after the heroes have saved the day and left all the dead bad guys behind. And <laughs> you literally go through the same levels as Shadow Warrior had and you mop up the mess you you okay so this is uh, but this isn't a matter of somebody plays through shadow warrior first and then you clean it up this is just sort of an homage to um it's actually um sort of like a marketing tie-in so you get this free with your uh, shadow warrior pre-order okay or whatever cute um yeah so you <laughs> i mean for whatever reason you can go through and clean up the mess afterwards and you literally mop up the blood uh, throw the severed limbs into the incinerator and generally make things spick and span again. Yeah. Pretty amusing <laughs> concept. It, it might be fun for 30 minutes or so before and it wears off. Yeah, exactly. Why not? And what's cool is South Africans came up with that hilarious idea. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, then something um, that actually deserves a little bit of time, which I don't think we have, but um, hmm. YouTube's copyright system we've spoken about 
for you know a, a couple of shows now, and uh, and now there's this news that that somebody used the the copyright the, the copyright infringement reporting system, a mm. publisher. Uh, if I have this correctly, yes, um, to have video reviews of their games taken down. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Now this is why exactly why I wanted to bring up the article before the show. So there we go. Okay. So the game in question is Gary's Incident. Um, okay. Is this related to Gary's Mod at all? Nope. It's okay. uh, it's made by a relatively small uh, Canadian game studio, uh, Wild Wild Game Studio. Is okay. The name of the developer and uh, Gary's Incident's game and uh, John Bain, aka Total Biscuit. Uh, some people may know him. He's quite um, yeah. He's a uh, quite uh, a prominent YouTube game reviewer. Like and webcaster. As yeah, well. and he's also a shout caster for Starcraft, uh, yeah. Starcraft. Yeah. And um, anyway, I mean, I love his stuff. I, I subscribe to his channels. And uh, one of his, um, you know, one of the things he does is promote lesser known games. He doesn't want to promote, you know, your big AAA titles that everyone knows about. What's the point of that? So he, he goes out and finds indies and, you know, cool looking games and he'll do a, uh, a series on them. And uh, one of his, uh, he did, I think it was the WTF, which, uh, which is his sort of standard series for introducing us to lesser known titles and he did Gary's incident. I was like, what the hell is? Yes. I, I remember, yeah, yeah. That's that's how he So um so Gary's in, uh, Gary's incident didn't go down well. And uh, w one of the things I like about uh, Total Biscuit is he doesn't pull his punches. Um, he's very analytical, but he he'll tell you when a game is rubbish and why it's rubbish and he'll make sure by the end of his twenty minute gameplay playthrough you know that it is rubbish and you will not waste your money on it because one of the other points of him making these videos is to alert consumers to rubbish games or good games for that matter. So uh, the video went up and a few days later uh, he discovered that his video had been taken offline due to a copyright infringement claim and this is YouTube's automated system. Anyone can come along and say, oop, that video violates my copyright and YouTube has a shoot first, ask questions later sort of policy. Yeah, then and you've got to go into the whole arbitration process yes, to get the video back up. And and he and he says the problem with this is, um, you know, there's a three strikes and you're out rule, and this is his livelihood. This isn't, you know, this isn't messing around. This is his business, and um, it's it's not unheard of for, um, you know, game cr uh, uh, game criticism to have adverts next to it, and uh, because. Uh, videos are monetized on YouTube. This this was the loophole they abused. They said, oh, that contains our game video content and there's adverts on it. Therefore, you're making money off our content. It must be taken down. And uh, he made a response video to this explaining the whole situation, um, painting uh, Wild Game Studios in a very bad light for doing this. Um, he went through all the, you know, the due process of contacting them, requesting a review for copy, explaining what he'd be doing with it, you know, uploading a video on YouTube. So it wasn't like they were completely taken by surprise by what he did. They sent him a review code to review. I mean, they had plenty of time to check out his channel and the kind of thing he does. Uh, so they, they can't really argue that, um, yeah. you know, Also, it, you it can't expect the positive knowledge. review all the time. Yeah, and... Um, it, you know, there's all sorts of nitty gritty and you guys can go watch the video if you're interested. But, you know, there were plenty of other reviews um, about how bad the game is. But the key thing here is uh, Total Biscuits review has, you know, he has millions of subscribers and his was sitting on like 100,000 views at the time. Uh, obviously, it's one of the first results when you Google something. And um, these guys wanted it taken down because obviously it harms their sales. Now, gamers will say, well, that's an outrage because... How dare you attack Total Biscuit? How dare you attack our right to critique games? And how dare you make a crappy game and then try and cover it up? So yeah, all in all, it's a fairly horrible incident, yeah. and um, and, and it's it just exposes the problem to the YouTube copyright infringement system as well. Yeah, um, and it's and it's, it's a sticky thing because you know um, I, I was like, oh damn you Google, but the mm. reason this happened is because of what copyright holders demanded yes. and big media. I'm not yes. talking about small guys. I'm talking about what big media demanded of YouTube. Yes. Um, but, I mean, be that as it may, I'm going to move us yep. swiftly yeah, along. Yeah, I mean, a long debate. We on can go on to all night, yeah. the uh, PS4 in uh -huh. South Africa pre-orders. What's this about now? Can you risk waiting, you ask? Yeah, well, we, you know, PS4 has been a hot topic, of course, and um, we wondered how things are going at retail, uh, how many pre-orders have been in. And obviously, guys don't want to share their numbers um, for various reasons, but they basically hinted that if you want to get a PlayStation in time for its launch on the 13th of November, uh, sorry, December, I think, 6th of December? December, December, sometime in early December, if you want that PlayStation 4 under your Christmas tree, you better pre-order one now because the next shipment will only arrive sometime in early 
2014. They reckon maybe January or something like that. But, uh, you know, you can't bank on these things. Mm. So, um, you know, Mac larger guys like Macro said, like, we're going to try and make sure there's some stock that we can put on the shelves, but we're also doing pre-orders. And basically, you know, you'd rather have a guaranteed sale than put stuff on shelves. So, uh, you know, time is running out. And uh, basically, if you want to make sure you have that PlayStation 4 for Christmas, order it now is the message we received from the uh, big local retailers and Wh some of the smaller guys. Which, which one so. can, I mean, uh, to, to, to poke holes in it a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, of course. Which one they, can they would say from that. them? Yeah. Would, they would <laughs> say that. But also, I don't think it's too far-fetched because we know that uh, Stokinical had to pull, sort of pull some strings. when We're not really an official launch country yeah. in a way. Uh, but we did previously speak to um, the Stokinical CEO and uh, he said, yeah, like... Sony is well aware of South Africa's markets and you know the situation and basically because of our good relationship with Sony we managed to secure a shipment of PlayStation 4s for our country so oh, that's cool. we're certainly marginal on the grand scheme of things but they don't ignore us and at least we've got some consoles uh, heading our way so it, it, it could be um, quite true that there is a limited supply, supply especially for this initial wave and you know more will arrive obviously but um, if you want to have one and be the talk of the town and the jealous and make all your friends jealous, you better pre-order it now, I think. Mm, mm. Um, I'm going to, uh, that brings us to the end of Quick Geek. Mm -hmm. uh, many apologies. <laughs> of an um are there, but that's the end of Quick Geek. What I wanted to do though, uh, two thoughts through my head. Um, what I'm going to take us into now is some comments from IRC, uh, ah. which we have been unable to give attention to because we've been trying to blast through uh, the rest of the show. And so um, uh, some interesting comments from the IRC, and I'm just going to read them not respond to them immediately, but one is, as I see it, Woolworth simply cannot bitch about fair use of IP they claim to begin. And nobody's mentioning that Eodia stole the initial image without giving credit until it was uncovered by an independent person. Um, and oh, uh, So the designer apparently stole it because she claims it was all her original work. Yeah, but so WebTech Law does discuss this as well in some detail. Mm -hmm. She did base her image on something else, but that was released, I believe, into the public domain okay. for designers. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, that, that's worth checking out on Web Tech Law. Um, then on the operating system <laughs> stuff, our IRC is XP rules. Windows ninety eight is where it's at. Boot to DOS <laughs> for all the old stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then Ubuntu thirteen ten. I can tell no difference other than GCC is up to four point eight point one. Um, <laughs> and uh, then we've got okay on the mobile termination rate mm -hmm. situation. A very vibrant discussion. Mobile termination rates can change the game, says one commenter. Getting Visa, Vodacom and MTN to give Telcom back some money. Billions, says another. Yeah. Um, Ali, Alan can prove that it, it is willful violation of the competition laws of South Africa. He designed the practice. <laughs> <laughs> Fair comment. And for people who don't know, uh, Alan or Craig, current CEO of Cell C, used to be CEO of Vodacom yeah, back yeah. in the day. So, <laughs> so yeah. it's actually pretty funny. Um, and then uh, a funny one uh, on uh, Zuneid Vabulia's uh, assertion that too much competition can cause market failure is market failure is a bleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just censoring that uh, so I don't have to do it after the fact. Um, and then, yeah, uh, market failure by regulatory capture, says another. Yes. <laughs> um, and, uh, oh, apparently a pound uh, by ah. says fried roadkill is 0.453592 kilos. That's very light. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that's for the iPad. Uh, yeah, that's now the a new pound. IPad, the air. <coughs> yeah, and uh, and then there's a whole long discussion in RC, which I'm not going to read out to everybody. <laughs> that was quite interesting. You missed it if you missed the live show. Sorry, sorry about that. About how great cassettes were and Commodore 64, <laughs> ZX 81s. Uh, yep, it's yep. it's great stuff. Before yeah. DLC was even a thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, with that, I'm going to take us into some events. And we have only one event on the calendar. For more geeky events, check out Stardates at Sierra Today. But I think... By Odin's beard. <laughs> Thor, the Dark World, is starting on Friday, the 8th of November. Should and be fun. What's great about mm. Thor is that it, it, it's great for dudes and girls to go and watch. Like there's uh, sort of equal opportunity uh, objectification. That's <laughs> what, uh, what I want to call it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. And... I, 
you know, the, the storyline and the special effects. It's a comic book storyline. Yeah. If you're not into comic book storylines. Yeah, it can be challenging, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, um, I mean, I certainly enjoy the superhero movies. Absolutely, I mean, and yeah. you can pretty much throw anything at me within reason. Mm. But, yeah. They've been I doing mean, a good job lately. Anything so. from Daredevil to Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. <laughs> I'd probably go and see. <laughs> um, and we always end the show on a bit of a kicker. And this one is also courtesy ah. of James. Yes, um, where's the notes? I saw this interestingly, um, I, and, I, and I always open this thing, and, and I don't know if this teases you guys or if it frustrates you. If it frustrates you when I don't give you the name of the thing I'm talking about immediately, let me know. Whine at me at <laughs> Jan, you suck at Let's Talk Network. TV. Yeah. Um, the inbox may be full, but you can try it like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like the like the Department of Transport's tariff ah, inbox yes. that just wasn't accept, accepting Bounces emails. the mails back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I s actually saw this on a streaming service which mm. operates in South Africa called Simfire. Oh, okay. And I saw, oh, hey, he's got oh, a new wow. album out. Which yeah, I had to catch it on mainstream media like a chump. <laughs> so I only heard about this today. And um, Captain Kirk is cracking into the prog rock arena with his uh, first... Uh, he's done some albums before, and they're mainly spoken word albums. They're all spoken word. He well, can't sing In fact, crap. entirely <laughs> spoken word albums then, and this is no different. But uh, apparently it's his first uh, prog rock effort. And the, it is, the first song has been released called Ponder the Mystery. And um, the album is of the same name. And he works with some uh, yeah, industry luminaries. There's Billy Sherwood, who's the producer. Uh, some of the bands this guy's worked on include Conspiracy, Logic, Yes, Toto, Circa, and Yosso. Some of those I know, some I don't. And uh, it seems he has a collaborator in some of those bands in Tony K, who's from Yes, Flash, Badger Detective. Not Badger Detective, Badger, comma, Detective. <laughs> <laughs> Badger Detective is yes. the name of my new band. There we go. Badfinger, Circa, Yosso, and even David Bowie. So there's definitely some musical credit behind the chat. Uh, who I, I speaks say, a lot. Uh, I must say, mm. I, I enjoyed the prog rock parts. Yeah. Um, it, it's very sort of like mainstream, almost like pop prog rock, if that's even a thing. And if it is, I coined a trademark. And uh, Royalties yeah. can be sent to. There we go. James and uh, it PayPal. was a lot of fun. Anyway, there's a music video and everything. We've linked to the video in the show notes for you guys to go check it yep. out. I'm going to go bomb this on RC so mm. you guys can enjoy it immediately. Uh, in RC, I've not given you any other show notes in RC. I do apologize. If you want something, I'll link you. But it sounds like you guys did just fine yeah, yeah, without me. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that, thank you so much for joining us for our show. Um, James, where can people find you? Uh, best place to come find me is over on my gaming and on the forum. Um, yeah, that's where I hang out a lot of the time. Cool. So. Um, I write for mybroadband.co.za. We had a bit of a my star mm -hmm. uh, takeover of Let's Talk Network, Let's Talk Geek today. Um, that's where I spend most of my online time as well. Um, I write a lot for my broadband. And occasionally you can find me on Twitter at YanVZA. And I'm also on Google Plus much less frequently than on Twitter. But when it is, it's deep and insightful and you'll be moved. Absolutely. Uh, not to really. tears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this guy so dumb? Anyway, <laughs> Jan from Yellen, circle that and, uh, and you'll get updates from me on Google Plus as well. Uh, with that, um, we are announcing the end of the uh, scheduled Let's Talk Geek mm. episodes for the year. There will probably be one more episode this year, 2013. Um, but we are not committing to a date as yet. Mm -hmm. um, so we will let everybody know in good time. Twitter, on the My Broadband forums, uh, we've got a mailing list. If you're keen on that, just pop us an email and, and I'll add you to the mailing list or let us know in IRC or Twitter um, to be notified of when live streams go up. And, uh, and yeah, so we'll do like a Christmas special or something. Uh -huh, yeah, sounds good. And, uh, and so we'll see you for that and we'll let you know when that happens. Excellent. With that, uh, catch you then. <laughs>